I'm David, the co-founder of Sato, and if you're in the blockchain space, I think this is going to be one of the most important videos you'll watch all year. The reason is, in the next six minutes, I'm going to describe how to build a blockchain that can never get so big that it collapses. Now, the reason we want to do this is not so that we can put movies on the blockchain. It's so that we can have lots of transactions that have lots of data attached to them. Now, when people first learn about Sato, uh, one of the things that gives them pause is they think there are a lot of solutions to these problems, and they don't realize that all of the solutions that people think work are actually broken. Uh, some people think that layer two networks are going to help us with this when scaling, but layer two networks like the Lightning Network are not universal broadcast networks. It's not the same thing, not the same thing as a blockchain. Uh, some people think that IPFS will solve all of our problems, uh, leaving aside the fact that there's no guarantee your data is going to stick around. Listen to what they're actually saying. They're saying, we have a network that is generating money and we don't know how to incentivize people to store data, but other people will do it for free on some other network. Like, no, they're not, not at hundreds of terabytes. Uh, sharding is a better solution, uh, but the problem is that it doesn't solve the underlying issue. So all it really does is it delays the problem killing you while introducing a lot of coordination issues between the shards. Uh, finally, you have Ethereum. Ethereum is doing a rent solution for its smart contracts. This is not a good solution, first of all, because it forces you to use a smart contract when you probably don't want to. Uh, and secondly, because well, who decides what rent is? What they've got is they're introducing a Soviet economic system. Uh, what we're going to explain today is a market solution, which is much, much preferable and doesn't break. So what are we going to do? Uh, the way we're going to solve this is I want you to think of the classic blockchain. Maybe this has 10,000 blocks or 10 million blocks. It doesn't really matter. Now, the first thing we're going to do is let all blocks fall off the chain. So when block 10,001 is produced, Block one disappears and block two becomes our new Genesis block. Now, this is a problem because we've deleted block one, so all of the tokens and data have just disappeared. Uh, so let's solve that problem. And the way we're gonna do that is by rebroadcasting transactions using the consensus layer. So whoever produces block 10,001, in order for that block to be considered valid, they have to take all of the money and data in block one and include it in their new block in a way that the consensus rules will permit it to be valid. What this means is if you had money or if you had data in block one, you now have it in block 10,001. This is called automatic transaction rebroadcasting. And if you're paying attention, you'll note that all we've really done is recreate a permanent ledger using a transient ledger. Right? Like, so all of the data is still there, we're just using a transient chain. Now, that might seem silly right now, but note how it opens the door to an actual solution that's going to solve these underlying economic issues. Uh, you know, if, if we care about pruning, for instance, note that all of a sudden our consensus layer can manage the data size. So what we can do, in addition to removing spent transactions, for instance, is we can even charge fees for rebroadcasting. Now, in Sato, uh, ATR transactions are going to pay twice the fee paid for by new transactions. And what this is going to do is it's going to fix the incentive problem that is killing blockchain on the most fundamental level. And the reason it does this is because suddenly we have an actual market system that prices the cost of putting a transaction on the blockchain. As the price of new transactions rise, the fees that are paid by old transactions rise too. So we're going to get this equilibrium where our blockchain can never get too big because it's going to delete as much data as it adds in equilibrium. And the other really interesting thing is that a bunch of other unsolved problems disappear. No one can just cheat and delete old data, for instance, because unless a block producer is doing all of the work that they're supposed to do, they won't know what data needs to be re-included in the chain. Another even more important problem that's solved is that no one can pass costs to the future. Now, right now in most blockchains, the incentive is for block producers to dump as much data as they can on the chain because that's how they maximize their income. And the problem with this is that when it gets too expensive, of course, they're just going to leave and go mine on another chain. But in this solution, you can't do that. And the reason you can't do that is you aren't paid for work that's, that needs to be done in the future. The future will pay for itself. You're only paid for the work that you've done in the past Genesis period. There are lots of other benefits and no additional vulnerabilities to this system over a classic blockchain like Bitcoin. 
Uh, one of the really interesting things we found is that once people realize that it works, they suddenly start to worry that we're going to end up with a blockchain that's so massive that only Google can run it. So we have people that say, yes, you know, this is great, but, uh, you know, is it really a blockchain if only Google can run it? And, you know, the point to note about with this is nothing is actually stopping us from putting a cap on the blockchain, block size. Uh, what this is doing is it's preventing our network from destroying itself. And this is really the important thing that I'm hoping that uh, people will take away. One, this is a solution that works and we need it implemented in any blockchain that scales. Secondly, though, the problems in blockchain scaling are like this. They're economic. They're not technical. And there are other incentive problems that are even worse than this that we need to fix too. And fixing these is what Sado does. So if you are interested in big data, decentralized blockchain scaling, uh, put away whatever you're doing and come and learn about the solutions that we've got. You can find out more on sado.tech, which is our website. Uh, and please get in touch with us if you are interested in developing on this kind of network or you have an application need for the kind of massive throughput that only Sado will be able to provide.